welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's part 86 today and we are back for a brand new season with transfer news, with some interesting additions to the squad and a very tough second qualifying round match in the Champions League. So if you're looking forward to all of that, finding out how we get on, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. Our Welsh experiment continued last weekend, so please do check that one out in the eye above if you haven't seen it. And you can follow us on Twitch as well with the link in the description below. But let's have a look today at transfers galore. It's not been the busiest window in terms of 100 players in and out, but we have made big improvements for the first time. And we've sort of reclaimed what we lost last year. We lost a lot of quality in the defence. We lost a bit of depth in the squad. And we tried to get that back. Of course, Linfield is going to be a difficult test. Ironically, if we get through that, we've got an easier tie in the third round. But a playable league, a side that we very narrowly scraped past in the SPFL Trust Trophy last year... It's going to be difficult, so let's go and have a look at the players that we're armed with to try and make it happen. So going back to the end of last season, one of our young players, who wasn't great, was poached by Harrogate under-18s. Them and Barrow came in for him. We also loaned out a lot of our players on extensions, so ones we had in last year. So Gwyn Morgan, he is better than Jack Hankin now. He could have been our backup right back, but I've sent him to TNS to try and build the nation and improve them in Europe. The same as Stefan Banks. We've also got a few of the others that have gone out as well. There's a couple of new faces that have managed to go out on loan, which really shows the progression of some of the teams in this nation. So most of those outward loans you can see there, the likes of Peter Blackburn to Colwyn Bay, Sean Rickards to Carmarthen, Aaron Gibbons to Barrytown United, people like that, they've all continued their loans this season. Let's have a look though at the couple we've bought in. Most importantly though is one of the names not there. Greg Pringle has stayed for another year. Him and Ian Brooks will both be here for the season. And we know that this man is the key man. He played in the first qualifier of the Champions League. You can see from his season stats at the bottom how well he did. Four goals in two games there. And he's the man that's going to make the difference. But we have got some additions to the squad as well. Now that comes in the form of two lone players with a couple of others going out of the club. So Dale Clark had already pre-agreed to join TNS. He's left us on a free to go there. Martin Sinclair, who was occasionally in our squads last season, got a few appearances for the squad. He's gone to Barrytown United now. He'll be on loan there for the season and hopefully help them in Europe too. And then Tony McLaughlin, who was that brilliant youngster in our, our youth intake a couple of years ago, who was also a striker that could not finish to save his life. But if TNS use him as a winger, might well be a good signing for them. So we'll wait and see how he gets used there. But good to see some of the other Welsh clubs coming in for our bigger players on loan. Our bigger young players, that is, on two, three hundred quid a week. So that's progression, if nothing else. However, the main story on this screen, and you can probably see it from the first name on the left, is the return of a hero. Yes, Dem Weaver at his new club, Birmingham, but still back on loan here. We're paying four and a half grand a week, so we've had to push the boat out a bit. But we've got our first choice left-sided defender back at the club. 59 caps for the under-21s of Wales. And we're just trying to push him towards the senior team. If he does well in Europe for us, that might happen. We've got him playing as a wing-back, so he shouldn't get recalled. Just a wonderful player, a real step up. And that also, in turn, improves our centre-half options because now Morgan Boys can go back in there. We've still got Cameron Badevo and we've got Price, the record signing last year. So we've now got three solid centre-halves as well. Peter Holding's coming through, he's still improving. So he's starting to look a bit better defensively, just off one signing. Christopher Broom is the other one who's coming on loan. With the defence looking solid, we just sort of pushed the boat out a bit. We struggled in centre mid last year because Cannell gets injured a lot, Daniel Williams gets injured a lot and Patrick Malone doesn't perform to match his attributes. So Christopher Broom is our second box-to-box -box midfielder. Now at 19 with a driven personality with three and a half star ability, five star potential and only on 1.3 grand a week, I've got a sneaky suspicion he's going to be the new Ian Brooks because eventually... When his loan runs out, when his contract expires, we won't be able to get him. We can't afford his wages. He won't come to our club. So to have someone who we can potentially loan for two or three years moving forward now, Christopher Broom could be that solution. So I'm really looking forward to working with him. He's already had a loan spell in Spain with Sporting Gijon and he's back here now with Bangor City. And he should, after joining last week, make his debut tonight against Linfield. 
So not the busiest transfer window in the world, but those two signings have really improved the quality at the club. One of them a returning bit of quality, and with the other additions and replacements last year, make it a stronger squad. And Christopher Broom is going to give us the strongest midfield we've ever had. Don't forget young Tom Jones is improving. We've got a few others that are really doing well. And I'm starting to think we could have a special team here. So let's go and have a look at the tactics for Linfield. We got through the first qualifier to get here pretty comfortably. A 3-1 win in Riga against the Latvian side. One and a half star reputation, but Greg Pringle was at it. A hat-trick away from home for him. He also got one in the first leg with Tom Jones, the youngster, adding the other. He's just starting to improve again. Had a couple of slightly injury hit years. But he scored one in five in the league. And he's doing well in Europe now too. He is officially up there with Cottrell as the best attacking midfielder at the club. Maguire's thrown his toys out the pram. I might just take my losses and sell him. And maybe that will give us a bit more flexibility on the wage bill too. The other young one that got to come on in the second leg was Peter Holding again. He's really improving. He's starting to show some quality. I'm just hoping this can be a breakthrough year for him. He's really starting to push forward now. And at 17, this could be the big year. But let's get through to that tactical meeting. It will be Bangor City v Linfield. They're no mugs. They're a good two-star professional side. They've played European football regularly. Last season, they got to the playoff and narrowly missed out to Dinamo Zagreb. The year before, they weren't great. But the year before that, they were playing Europa Conference group stage football. So they've got a lot of quality. We're going to have to be very careful if we want to beat them today. They've still got all of those stars that played against us in the last match. That, of course, was in the SPFL Trust Trophy. But with the way they've been playing, the way they're recruiting, and the way they're still signing players from other nations. So they've brought in Eric Bamba from Birmingham, who's a very good young defender. We looked at him. And they also got Bradley Brennan on a permanent, who is a centre-half we tried to sign this summer. They're a very similar club to us, and this tie could go either way. So this is the squad that we played in the second leg of the last qualifier. What we're going to do, though, is bring in Ben Cottrell as the number 10, I think. And we're going to bring in Broom into midfield because Malone wasn't great in that match. I'm actually going to drop Malone out of the squad as well with the heavy match load. We'll put Hankin on the bench for holding because we're playing a game where we're not just going to be comfortable favourites. But you can see where some of the other players are improving too. Harvey Lloyd is now a four-star player. He's looking really high quality. Is a regular for the Welsh under-21s. Duffy's struggling a bit up there. We might have to give him a rest soon. And then Keegan Riley at right back, again, still improving. John Price, their centre-half, still a good player, although not really moving forward so much. And Morgan Boys was in at centre-half. I don't know whether to go for him or Badebo. They're so evenly matched. Badebo is the better technical player, or the better defender, but not quite as good physically. Morgan Boys has got that quality, but is a little bit more inconsistent. But I'm going to stick with a Welsh boy at centre-half. We'll stick with what worked in the first qualifier. It means we have got George Wickens in goal, Riley and Weaver the fullbacks. Good to have him back on the left with Boys and Price at centre half. Harvey Lloyd at Broom making his debut, Brooks and Cottrell the midfield diamond, and Duffy and Pringle up front. The only thing that's going to harm us is a lack of match fitness. Whether it will be costly and lose us the tie is what we're about to go and find out. Into the game we go, it is Bangor City v Linfield, and it's an early European tie that could very much go either way. Here we go then, the two new star centre-halves playing for Linfield today. They've got quality players going forward and a good substitutes bench too. I was going to say if we're at our best, we'll get through though. That's not true. If Greg Pringle's at his best, we'll still get through. We've got a bit more of a solid defence now. So let's go and see what we can do. Into the first half we go here at Nampor because it's only the second qualifier. And fingers crossed we can get out on top. A clean sheet would be lovely as well. And here we are, 17 minutes on the clock. It's Linfield coming forward on the left-hand side. Cantor into Hamilton. It's disallowed for offside, but it was certainly a warning sign. Not what we were hoping for with the first moments of the match. But to be honest, we've not had a shot yet. And that's unusual after 18 minutes. As Weaver throws into Pringle, the main man. He gives it away though. Bradley clears downfield. Boys picks it up. Chance to run down the wing. Finds Weaver. Overlapping on that left-hand side. Almost playing like two fullbacks out there. But look how exposed we are at the back if we lose it. Harvey Lewis, last man. And has to go back to Wickens because he knew the threat was there. It's played out to Price, who's keeping his position well. He goes right to Riley. Over the top to Duffy. Pringles with him. Duffy goes alone. And he drags his shot wide. He started the season really poorly here in Europe. And that's the sort of chance that in form, he would normally be scoring easily. As Daly picks it up for Linfield. It's been a very even match in terms of chances. You can see they're a good side. You can see they're competing with us. They get it into Collins. 
They've got the away goal. We're in a spot of bother here. We knew this was going to be a hard game. We're going to demand more from the lads. I'm not confident we're going to win this tie. And it could well be a fight to get European group stage football this year. We've not had that for a while. And with two minutes to the break, it's the visitors on the prowl again. Daly goes over the top to Bradley. It's been a pattern that's worked for them a few times, although this one's over hit and goes straight to Wickens. Now, can we get that goal before the break? We've conceded from the only shot we've faced, but we've not really created much ourselves. We haven't got Pringle into the game, though Riley's trying to do that. Long ball up to him. Pringle brings it down, skins the centre half. That was Greg Pringle down to a tee until the finish. Because he's dragged it wide to the post. We're not used to seeing that. And at half time, it is Bangor City nil, Linfield 1. We're going to point the finger. We're going to ask for some desire. And we need a big reaction in this second half. The legs, the match fitness, not quite there. And so far, we've not looked like winning. We've not even dominated possession, which is very unusual for us. With an Alva gone, though, it's a Harvey Lloyd free kick into Broome. Could have been a star debut for him, but with 63 on the clock, I've got to make changes. Tom Jones will come on as the number 10. Duffy is going to be replaced by Max Dean. There's not much else I can do. Broom off, Williams on. Let's give ourselves a bit of experience, a bit of familiarity. But we're going to berate the boys. We're going to try and dig into them. We just need a goal now. We cannot afford to lose this. Though it's Linfield on the front foot yet again. Collins, the goal scorer, picks it up from the left wing. Cuts inside two. Switches right to Lafferty, the overlapping fullback. There's nobody there. It's into the back post. Collins almost makes it too. It's just wide of the post. It was unfortunate in the end. We've had one shot on target. When is the last time in any match, even against massive European sides, that we've only had one shot on target? Greg Pringle has been atrocious. And we said, if he plays well, we win. He was the worst player on the pitch, and we've lost. We've now got to head to Northern Ireland in a week's time, and we need a massive response. Because if not, we're fighting it out to reach the group stages in any competition. The Champions League dream is hanging by a thread. I'll see you in a moment to find out if we can save it. Here we go then, a difficult game that has just become a whole lot harder. We trail to Linfield going into the second leg. The away goal is there. We look toothless and we need Greg Pringle badly. We're sort of becoming a one-man team. We're getting offers for loads of players. We've got a few that are unhappy and all we're doing is loaning youngsters out at the moment. So what we've got to do today is find away goals from somewhere. And where that's going to be, I'm not quite sure. Ben Cottrell was awful. I feel like I've got to go for the players who are match fit. Jones has been brilliant, so let's get him in. Everyone else's match load has dropped to medium or light, so that should be a positive. Williams has got an offer. Do I take him out for Malone? I don't think so. We're going to leave it like that. I'll put Malone on for Hankin, actually. So we've got a right back who can push forward. Greg Pringle has got to be on it today. So the only change is going to be Tom Jones in at number 10. The youngster in to save the day from Ben Cottrell. Now let's go and get into the second leg at Linfield. We trail 1-0 going to Windsor Park and we desperately need to win or the Champions League dream is over. Well, it's a very similar side for Linfield and it's actually a bad story for Welsh football because both Barrytown United and TNS got awful, awful draws in the Europa Conference. So we're all hoping that Aberystwyth, the weakest side, can pick up the result. But we could all have lost from the competition that we were putting at the start of the season after this week. As Weaver gets it to boys early on. Can we get in? Pringles one-on-one. -on -one. Pringles scores, does he know? Off the line by Brennan. You can see why we wanted to sign him. Just never gave up on it. Lovely dink over the keeper from Greg Pringle. A much better sign already. But off the line by the defender. And as a result, it's still nil-nil. And still no shots on target. We've had one in 110 minutes. It's appalling. I don't know what to do. This Linfield side have just found the formula to stifle us. We are 10 minutes from half-time. There have been no shots on target in the game. We'll demand more, but we're getting nothing. Not even a reaction from the lads emotionally. And as we come into the half-time break, we've got 30 seconds of stoppage time to go and Linfield are on the front foot. If they score again, it could be over. As Bradley heads it just wide. But what on earth is going on? One shot on target in the first leg. One shot on target so far tonight. And half of them look nervous. I've got to take the youngster Jones off because he's nervous. He's played poorly. We need Cottrell to develop. We need somebody to produce their best performance. I need Greg Pringle to step up. I need someone to produce a moment of magic. And at the moment, we don't look like having a shot, let alone scoring. Still no highlights. Still nothing. Still no extra shots on target. And Bangor City are not just going to go out of the Champions League here. 
They're going to fall with a whimper. Pringle's anxious again. I've got to take Broom off. He's going to be replaced by Williams, who's motivated. Who else has got the mentality to turn us around? I mean, Weaver's been poor. I'm going to bring boys on. I'm going to put Badebo centre-half. He's one of the tried and trusted. I know it's not the ideal substitution at this point. But with 20 minutes to go, we've got to encourage the lads. We've got to get something. As Cantor puts the corner in, Brennan heads just over. The only thing that looks like happening at the moment is a Linfield goal. We're going to go attacking with 15 minutes to go. But I think we're about to go out of the Champions League. And I don't quite know what's happening. We have produced nothing. Greg Pringle has been shocking. Touchline shout to him. Let's try and encourage him. But there's nothing going on. Having said that, one goal and we go to extra time. As long as we don't concede. Cantor gets it on the right hand side. Back to Daly. He's got the chance to cross. Brooks nicks it. Now can we counter? Up to Pringle. To Cottrell. Duffy's there with him. Pringle's running off. Duffy's in behind. Rounds the keeper. Puts it in off the post. Forget Greg Pringle and your one-man team. Joe Duffy saves the day. 1-0 Bangor City. Thoroughly undeserved. And as it stands, we're going to extra time. But Linfield are straight on the front foot. And it could go wrong almost immediately. Cantor out to Jones. It's like Linfield are playing in second gear. And as soon as we threaten them, they just decide to turn on the style. Jones on the right wing. Back to Walker. He gets the chance to cross. How on earth are we beating Champions League teams playing like this? Although we're on the counter now. Cottrell nicks it. Duffy finds it again. Pringle's one-on-one. -on -one. Please deliver. Greg Pringle delivers. He has been woeful for 172 minutes. And then pops up with a crucial goal. Now Linfield need big goals. They need two. Because on away goals, we've done the job. And we have been woeful. We've not deserved it. We've not dominated. We've not played well. But with 92 minutes gone, we're going through. Because Linfield can't score twice. And now Greg Pringer's in again. He might be taking the mick now. It's a good save by Wright. It's tipped away. But the front two, when we needed the most, have turned up with clinical, ruthless edges. And as we go into the last 45 seconds of stoppage time, we can start to celebrate. We've come to Windsor Park and we've just about done it. It's squeaky bum time and we've made it count as Bamba's on the counter. Good block, but it falls for Bradley. We'd like to keep the clean sheet, but this should only be a consolation. Price defends well. Great positioning. We've talked about that attribute a lot in the Insight episodes. And you can see how important it was there. He was perfectly poised in the box to get a foot to it. Corrigan throws in. Riley hoofs it up more than away. Pringles there, wins the foul, exceptional stuff. And Bangor City go through 2-1 on aggregate against Linfield, the Northern Irish side. Not deserved over the 180 minutes, but we've got there. And now in the third round, we've got a much easier tie. I think important to admit that we probably got away with one there, that we might need to improve the squad a little more. But realistically, we've just got to be happy we got through. We'll now face Valor, who are the Icelandic side. I'm sure we've played them at some point in the past. Let's go and have a look at the schedule for previous years. If we go back, we definitely played them at some point in this series. It might be a few years back. There we go. So 2024, we played them. In the last qualifying round, it was the playoff for the Europa Conference groups. And we battered them. 5-1 on aggregate. So hopefully we can do the same again. We'll try and skip through that one. Because it will coincide with the start of the season. We've got lower league opposition in the League Cup. We've got Cardiff Met Uni in the League. And then we should be back for what we hope will be the Champions League playoff round with the dream still alive. Though we're going to have to improve if we want to have any success this year. Let's go and have a quick look at the Europa Conference. That's going to be the end of this episode. Have the other Welsh sides managed to shock the odds? Because they had awful draws by Aberystwyth and they're the weakest side. So we have got Barrytown United who lost 2-0 at home to Cluj. They're a strong Romanian team. And we scroll down to find out that TNS have lost 2-1 at home to Hapoel Haifa in the first leg of their qualifier. And Aberystwyth, who had the weaker opposition from North Macedonia, have unfortunately lost 2-1 in the home leg as well. So the second leg of all of those is tomorrow night. Let's skip ahead and see what the results are before we finish. Hopefully, some good news to end on. Well, not only could it be bad news to end on results-wise, we'll find that out in a moment. But Tony McLaughlin has picked up a four-month injury through wear and tear in the second game of the season for TNS against Hapoel Haifa. So let's see if they got through, shall we? I doubt it. They didn't. They lost 2-0 in the second leg as well. This is going to be a really disappointing year, I can tell it. Barrytown United lost 2-0 again, 4-0 on aggregate. Did Aberystwyth save the day? 
they didn't. They lost 2-1 again. 4-2 on aggregate. So all the Welsh sides out of the first hurdle. Two of them with poor draws. And one of them just not good enough. It's a really disappointing stage. Because every time we think this nation's going to start moving forward. It just drops off. The transfer window so far. It's actually been relatively quiet. TNS have brought in a couple of good players. So Dorian being one of them. A centre midfielder. And of course one of the others being Tony McLaughlin. Who's now going to be away for some time. Landudno have lost their best youngster to Brighton at 17, who looked a good young striker. It's a real shame that. So actually, this has been a bit of a disappointing window, and I'm not sure that we're going to see the best of any of these Welsh sides this year. It might make the domestic race a bit closer, though. For us, though, we'll skip through the third qualifier and the start of the Welsh season, and we will be back for what we hope is a Champions League playoff. Again, the Welsh hopes are pinned on us, and we've got to deliver the coefficient. So if you're looking forward to finding out if we can do it, if we can improve from that pretty scrappy performance against Linfield, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you thought of the summer work. I thought it was good, but I think we might be proven wrong by Linfield. Or is it just the match fitness that made us look poor there? We'll see you in the next episode as we move through pre-season. If you are looking forward to the rest of it and you haven't already, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts as daily videos release from two long-term stories, as well as much more content across the channel. And you can catch up with all the playlists in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel, which is down in the description below. A massive thank you for watching. A big thanks for your continued support as we move into our 10th season with Bangor City. And I'll see you next time if we can make it back-to-back -back Champions League group stages. Can we really start to become a European powerhouse? Let's find out. I'll see you next time. Uh -huh.